Earlier today, Daniel Penny, the Marine veteran who put a subway rider in a chokehold who later died, turning himself in to New York City police to face second-degree manslaughter charges. The 24-year-old voluntarily surrendered, walking into the NYPD's 5th Precinct in Chinatown. He was then brought before a judge where he was arraigned before being released on $100,000 bail. His lawyer later speaking to the press. Shortly after 8 a.m. this morning, Daniel Penny surrendered uh, at the 5th Precinct at the request of the New York County District Attorney's Office. He did so voluntarily and with the sort of dignity and integrity that is characteristic of his history of service to this grateful nation. And after about three hours in the police station, Penny would emerge, only this time in handcuffs, never saying a word to press gathered outside the precinct. Penny was led to an unmarked police car. Now, of course, not everybody sees Penny's actions on that sub subway car as dignified. Well, Witnesses have described the victim, Jordan Neely, as, quote, acting erratically. One witness telling police, Neely said, quote, I don't care if I die. I don't care if I go to jail. I don't have any food. I'm done. Others don't see that as relevant at all. Neely also had a history of encounters with the NYPD, including 42 arrests, including three unprovoked assaults on women in the subway between 2019 and 2021. Another question if that's relevant. Now, in the 11-day time period between Neely's death and Penny's arraignment today, there were massive protests calling for Penny's arrests on the streets of Manhattan, on subway platforms, and even on the subway tracks. And some argue that that may have led to the fact that District Attorney Alvin Bragg didn't present the case to a grand jury, which typically would be the way you deal with this kind of case. Instead, Bragg filed a felony complaint on his own which is a move that could add fuel to an already burning fire, that this decision was impacted by politics. And then there are the charges themselves. So Penny's been charged with second degree manslaughter rather than negligent homicide, which could be an overreach. So let's break down the difference. In New York, second degree manslaughter occurs when someone causes the death of another, another person, through actions that they perceived as having a substantial and unjustifiable risk of death, yet consciously disregarded the risk and that is punishable, punishable by up to 15 years in prison. So in other words, in order to be found guilty, it would have to be that proven that Penny basically knew that the chokehold had a substantial risk of killing Neely, but proceeded with it anyway. Now, criminally negligent homicide, on the other hand, that occurs when someone causes the death of another person through actions that they failed to perceive as having a substantial and unjustifiable risk of death, that's punishable by up to four years. Again, Penny's charged with the more serious of the two, second-degree manslaughter. But earlier today, attorneys for the family of Jordan Neely saying that the charges aren't serious enough. They say we disagree with the manslaughter charge. We think it should be murder because he knew what would happen. He knew Neely would die. Justice looks like a conviction, and justice looks like a conviction for murder. Neely family attorney Dante Mills getting ahead of a self-defense claim that many foresee Penny might be utilizing. Mr. Neely did not attack anyone, he did not touch anyone, he did not hit anyone. Because we all could be one paycheck or two away from that happening to us. We could be one tragedy away from that happening to us. So who are we to look at someone and say they were houseless, so they must be a bad person? Now there's one thing that is definitely for sure at this point. This is a complicated case with really no easy answers. But the good news is, that's why we're discussing it with Bernardo Villalona, who's back with us. She's a criminal defense attorney, former homicide prosecutor for the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office. I want to clear something up with you, Bernardo. A lot of people are saying Bragg didn't bring this to a grand jury, arrested him with a, 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 just a, a felony complaint. Is he doing this on politics? Is he being pressured by all of the, the protests that we just saw? What's your take on this being a political move by the DA's office? Look, politics always adds pressure. That's clear. And of course, all the protests ask pressure. But when we're talking about a case of deciding whether to do an arrest or present a case to the grand jury, I was a homicide prosecutor for 10 years making determinations on whether individuals should be arrested. 99% of the time, it started with an arrest. And after the arrest, I will present the case to a grand jury. And that's hearing 
in New York, which is similar when I was doing it in Brooklyn, it's a similar policy how they do in New York, in the Bronx, in all five boroughs here. So politics didn't play a role in that. But is one of the theories he didn't present it to a grand jury because maybe at this point he doesn't feel that they would come back with a, uh, an indictment? Maybe he feels, hey, we need more evidence to go forward. Maybe there's weaknesses in this kind of uh, manslaughter case. Not at all. What Alvin Bragg wanted to show to the public is that, look, this man is no different than anyone else. If someone else would have witnessed a homicide or a homicide would have been recorded on video and you could clearly identify the individuals in the video, it would have probably been an immediate arrest or if not, a few days later. So here, Mr. Bragg is showing you, look, I'm carrying out the laws as you entrusted me to carry out the laws and we're being showing that with everyone, no matter who they are, where they come from, what race they are. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.